So today we're taking a look at what happens after an area has been maybe messed up because of a natural disaster or maybe something that humans do to kind of um, change the environment. Now before we take a look at that um, topic, we have to take a look at what can ha happen to the area. So a disturbance is um, any type of temporary change in the environment that causes it to be a little bit different. Um, so that can be an example of it would be maybe like a natural disaster or maybe something that humans do to cause the environment to be a little bit different. Um, these are all examples of uh, disturbances because they change what the environment might look like. Now a tsunami, if you don't know, um, it's caused by let's say an earthquake um, in the middle of an ocean and then it causes this these large waves to um, form. And then forest fires and also flooding um, can go ahead and just change the environment. Things that we can do to change up the environment might be, let's say, deforestation. And that's when we cut down the trees. We can use the trees for our own resource. Um, but disturbances occur, whether it's natural or by humans. Um, but the topic for today is what happens after that disturbance? What happens to the area? Does it stay the same or does it change? Okay. And the answer to that is there are changes that occur um, after a disturbance and that's called ecological succession. So ecological succession is a series of changes or steps okay, that happen to the area. Okay. It might take some time, it may take longer time depending on how badly the area was changed. Now we're going to take a look at two different types of ecological successions. We have primary succession and secondary succession. So when you think of the word succession or ecological su succession, just think it's regrowing, it's changing over time. So we're going to take a look at primary succession first. In primary succession, it's a type of succession, so it's a type of um, a series of changes that occur in an area where there was nothing left of the older community. So there's no soil, there's no plants, there's no um, animals. Nothing is there. So what type of disturbances would cause an area to be completely wiped out? An example of this would be, let's say, a volcano erupting. When we have a volcano erupting, you will see that all the lava that comes out of that volcano, once it, set, um, once it goes onto the land and then it cools off, it'll go ahead and kind of just kill everything that's there. So plants will die. Um, it, when the lava um, settles and then it cools, it actually forms into rocks. Um, animals that are able to get away, they go away. But if you see here, that's what the area looks like after a volcanic um, eruption, and there's nothing there. There's not even soil that's left. Retreating glaciers also can cause nothing to be there um, of the older com community. If you don't know what a glacier is, it's just big, big areas of just snow and ice. And retreating means well, because the climate is changing, the temperatures are changing, those glaciers are now starting to retreat. That means they're starting to melt. So here's a quick video explaining what retreating glaciers are. As warmer temperatures become the norm in our society, a unique and very important part of our ecosphere is disappearing. Just like this glacier in Alaska, these large chasms of ice and rock are melting at an unprecedented rate all over the planet. A team of scientists and photographers have set up time-lapse cameras at the edges of the world's fastest retreating glaciers. They've captured a unique way to blend art with science in these phenomenal time-lapse movies. These pictures are the, are, are the manifestation of that, and most importantly, they are the eyewitness evidence of how climate change is reshaping our world. With 10% of the world covered by glacial ice, it's imperative that humans pay close attention to the warning signs they convey. Glacial melt is a significant contributor to sea level rise, one of the biggest threats climate change presents to modern civilization. In fact, scientists believe we may already be locked into three feet of sea level rise, enough to submerge hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Climate change can often be an abstract concept, making it tough for world leaders to justify the type of policy changes necessary to curb the emission of greenhouse gases. 
But images like these make the topic of global warming incredibly hard to ignore. I'm CNN meteorologist Derek Van Dam. So if you can see, once those glaciers melt underneath, there's nothing. There's no soil, there's no plants, there's no animals. Um, it's just rocks. So these types of disturbances cause um, the area to not look like how it used to be. It's just completely bare. Once an area has been wiped out, there's no life, there's no soil, what needs to happen first? Well, organisms have to come in. And these organisms that first live in the area are called pioneer species. We can't have animals come in yet because there's no plants. There's no other animals there. We can't have plants come in yet because there's no soil. So the first thing that has to happen in primary succession is we need soil. How do we get soil if it's just the area is full of rocks? Well, there are organisms that need to settle into the area called lichens. And they could settle into the area by being carried through the wind, and then they settle on the rocks. When they get to the rocks, they actually break down the rocks into smaller pieces. And when they die, they mix in with the rocks and they form soil. So soil is not just rocks, it's also um, parts of dead organisms. So now that we have the soil, now other organisms can come in. And here are pictures of the um, lichens that are on the rocks. Okay, and like I said, they help to make the soil. So now that there's a little bit of soil, then what we can do is have the plants come in. And how do they come in? Well, they're, the seeds and the spores are just brought into the area and carried in by wind. So if you can see here, there was bare rock. Okay, some, some type of disturbance wiped everything out. The lichens came in and now they're breaking down the rock and forming soil when they die. And now there's a little bit of soil enough to help small plants grow. Now those small plants will go ahead and be replaced with larger plants, let's say flowers, bushes, eventually even larger trees because um, they're competing for space, they're competing for um, sunlight, they're competing for water. So all the other small plants, they're going to die, they're going to add to the soil. Okay, and then that can bring on large plants that are, the seeds are carried by the wind and um, maybe by other organisms and they can go ahead and settle into the area and grow. And you can see that the amount of soil is getting more, there's more and more soil. Why? Because as more organisms die, it adds to the soil and it adds to the nutrients of the soil. So now that we have small plants and they're replaced by larger plants, now we can also start to bring in the um, animals. And animals who eat the plants can be there and then other animals, other larger animals who eat the smaller animals can get back too. And that's primary succession. It's a group of changes that occur when there is nothing left in the area and after a while you can see things are starting to um, get back to a balance. Well the other type of succession that we have is called secondary succession and secondary succession can either happen after primary succession or it can happen after a disturbance that doesn't completely destroy the area. So there's still, let's say, some type of soil left, maybe some plants were able to survive. Um, so what type of disturbance would cause a secondary succession where things are not completely destroyed? So examples of this could be, let's say, forest fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, or something caused by us, humans, deforestation, where, you know, there's still soil left, maybe some plants were able to survive, everything's not completely destroyed. So because things are not completely destroyed, we don't, ha we don't start the same way we did with primary succession. Since there's still soil left, we don't need the lichens there. So now what we can do is bring in um, some, some plants. Okay, and remember it's carried by the wind, so and they're replaced by larger plants and the animals can come back in. So taking a look at these two pictures, what's some differences between primary and secondary succession? So you can see that secondary succession here at the bottom happens faster. And I know it happens faster because of this timeline here at the bottom. To get back to this kind of area where it's this forest, the plants and animals are back, it takes about maybe 40 or so years. 
but here for primary succession, it takes hundreds of years to get to this area where there's big trees and lots of soil and things like that. Why does secondary succession happen faster? Well, the reason why is because there's soil that was able to survive the disturbance. So because there's soil left, they can plants can start to easily um, grow. With primary succession, since nothing was left and we're left with just bare rock, no plants, no soil, we have to start all over again, and lichens are the ones that help us to make the soil. So as a result of there being soil left, secondary succession can happen faster because plants can regrow a little bit faster. What's the whole point of having these series of steps that occur after a disturbance? Well, the whole point is to get back to a climax community. That means an area where it's stable and there's a balance of plant life and animal life. Now, um, if an area was a forest and then something ha a disturbance occurred, sometimes the changes might cause it to not be a forest. Sometimes it will be a forest at the end when it reaches climax community. It's all dependent on what are the changes that occur. But in the end, the whole point is um, of primary or secondary succession is to ultimately reach climax community so the plants and animals are back and there's a balance of them.